Welcome back, folks. It's Locked On Chiefs. A fun day for me out at camp. Chris is going to grill me on what happened where and who's doing what, but there are a lot of small updates we're going to get into as we get into the second preseason game is coming down. Who can make strides? Who can't? A lot to talk about here on the Locked On Podcast, and we're glad that you're with us. This is Locked On Chiefs. It's the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. From the land of the free and the home of the Chiefs, this is the Locked On Chiefs podcast. Welcome back. How was camp, sir? It was hot. I survived, though. Uh, A lot of good things to see, and it's been an interesting day. Uh, Really, I thought the tempo was pretty good for getting back from a team that had to travel out to the West Coast, play their game, got back late and everything. Uh, I was pretty happy with the the tempo of camp uh, today. A lot of interesting little twists. Yeah, and we do need to get into a couple of news items uh, really quick before we dive into your camp. Uh, So Alex Smith got a contract from ESPN, so he's going to be an analyst at ESPN. I'm really impressed with that. Uh, We heard about that a little bit ago, but I'm really glad to see that is actually happening. I agree. Um, Let's see. There's one other thing. There is a... There's a couple of dates that are coming up, and I can't remember exactly when it was. Uh, sometime this week, they have to cut down to 85 players. So that mm-hmm. is coming. Uh, so that's something to watch. Uh, next week, they have to get down to 80 players. Uh, so that's something that we're going to need to watch as well. Uh, right now, I don't really have a good feel for who those five players are going to be. It could just be moving guys to injured or you know releasing because of injuries. Uh, we'll see how that ends up. Yeah, I mean, my gut feeling out there is these are the guys that are on their edge. It's DBs and corners, um, corners and and safeties, I'm sorry, uh, as well as some of the wide receivers. There's so many of them out there. Saw a couple of nice plays today, but there are a number of guys towards the bottom of the list that I just don't think have had enough opportunity to really make an impression to the point where they can stay. Right, and you're sitting here with the 90-man roster, and I'm kind of glad that they've made these different – places where you can actually make a couple of cuts. Um, I honestly wonder when you start looking at teams, do they look at the five guys that they think are the bottom five or do they start looking at veterans that they think this guy just isn't going to make our roster. Maybe we give him an opportunity to catch on somewhere else. If I know Brett Veach, it's a bit of both to tell you the truth. Right. Um, I, I don't know off the top of my head, if I could think of a veteran in that, like literally the, the lowest five guys in camp. So my guess is that some younger journeyman, but we'll see. It, it is coming down here. They do have another game on Friday. This is going to be a quick turnaround, but they got to make some progress. And I, I think that they're doing that for the most part. Yeah, and I agree. I, I don't know that the Chiefs are really going to be one of those teams. I was thinking more NFL wide that that'll mm-hmm. be really an issue is that teams may start looking at some veterans that say, we're just not going to be able to keep this guy or he's not going to make the team and maybe they'll let him go. Although you would think that those types of players you'd want to trade. So who knows what's going to happen in that regard. I think it could be a mixed bag, a little bit of both. Like I, the Chiefs will always be in the market, especially for somebody with experience. Um, especially I the don't, end. Uh, yeah, especially. Um, saw some changes today in that particular position group. I spent a lot of time focused on the defense and uh, of the offense, the wide receivers. Um, from <laughs> you where I was, seen on the defense, huh? I know Ooh. it's shocking, right? Uh, I, well, I mean, I, I guess I am a little surprised that you weren't just, you know oogling Michael Burton, but that's another a whole nother ball ballgame. Uh, the one thing I do want to say, you know, did you see that Tyron Matthew made the top 100 list again this huh. year, which is obvious, uh, but came in at number 58. I did not see that, but I, I can certainly understand, and I think that kind of goes by how many snaps they gave him in preseason game number one. Uh, he and Patrick, like, in and out in the blink of an eye, and I think that's smart. There's no reason for him to have contact or risk any kind of, of subsequent injury right now. 58? Low. I, I I was gonna say like I would put he was him in the 39 top 50 last year. Easily. Oh, yeah. was he? Okay, I'm glad you had well, that reference. I, and, and the other problem is is that there there's players like George Kittle that was at 50 and look what he did last year. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I think Christian McCaffrey was 44. He didn't even play last year. So I mean, it is what it is. Uh, other news: Patrick Mahomes has has a shoe that's going to be coming out from Adidas. So be watching for that. Okay. Um, size 15 does not fit me, but hey, it is what it is. It might fit you. Size 15, where'd that come from? 
I don't know. I think that's the size that he wears, as I understand it. But oh well. Oh, you mean a I model wear. of a shoe? Okay. Yeah, he has a new shoe coming out. That's what. I, yeah, he oh. he's got his own he's got his own shoe line coming out. Oh, it's nice to be a fashion so. mogul, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> he, says, he said it was a dream come true since he's been a little kid. He wanted to have his own shoes. Now he does. So uh, yeah. it comes out it's October. Sorry, not October. August twenty third. Be like Mike. I'm guessing that's going to cost a pretty penny, and I might have to save up for that kind of thing. I can probably do that by going over to betonline.ag and putting some money down on something that I can probably pull off with a win. I would like to do that because it is really easy. You can track all of your action on there, all on the website, whether it's NBA, NHL, all the UFC stuff, every sport that you can think of, even those that are not of interest at this time of the year, you can get your bets in, get your money into the action, and get off of the sidelines. This here is your chance because we have a promo code for you it's called lockdown you put that in the box and that gets you a 50 percent deposit bonus on top of what you put down in your own account from our friends over on betonline.ag check them out your online sportsbook experts that said there's a lot of money flowing down there like i can see guys making bets just amongst their their teammates you know who can do this in this upcoming game is that there's a lot of competition that was my big takeaway on the day was that for a team that just came off of a game against another opponent, they came back to camp. There, there was a lot of push. There was, I thought, a lot of good effort on the defensive front. Um, I thought the run game was coming together. They certainly emphasized it a little bit today. I think that's a positive sign about getting that competition standard going up, which will help them come week one. Yeah, and so one of the things that kept being a, you know, I guess a storyline during camp today was Juan Thornhill was running with the threes. Yeah. He, he basically and and don't don't think of it in that process because he got some time with the ones he was with the twos all day too he was literally on the field all day long and I think Andy addressed it afterwards that he's working through something I don't know what that is because they keep saying that he's fully healed but right clear, clearly something's going on and I think I got it's me, gotta I, be mental in my opinion maybe I don't know I don't see any hitch in his giddy up I don't see hesitation i don't see him um you know like his gait looks normal he looks quick when he goes um honestly the guy that i'm a little bit concerned about is uh, deandre baker looks a, a little bit like as he slows down say he runs a rep and he gets to the end of whatever it is contest the ball completion or not he was really great the other night zero for six completions on targets but then he has this little bit of a, of a hitch as he slows down. You know how guys like normally chop their feet and it's pretty smooth. His is not right now. And I'm a little concerned about that, but I don't see that with Thornhill. So maybe you're right. Maybe it has to be mental. But at this point, Andy says that he's okay, says that he's working through something. Well, let him work through it because he missed so many reps, I think, early in camp and definitely in OTAs that they were cautious with it. Maybe this is them getting him caught up. Um, Sorensen was out there with Matthew today as the pair when they only had two safeties on the field, and that was pretty evident. So I guess time will tell. Yeah. And I, you know, I'm still surprised Sorensen is still the guy that they're starting next to Matthew. Uh, but it is what it is. And hopefully Thornhill is able to come back to form and be the safety that we envisioned him being because there was a lot of potential there in the first, when he was a rookie. Uh, and amazing. honestly, he flashed it again last year, not near as much as he did as a rookie, but it's. Uh, he did flash some potential last year, too. I, yeah. I, I saw that you uh, had some forts and siding with some nice catches. Yeah, a, a, a pair by my account. Evidently, I missed another one, uh, according to Nate and Matt Derrick. So, like, uh, that's three quality catches on a day when there wasn't a whole lot of targets to go around. Um, Dries Fountain had a couple that, unfortunately, Patrick was a little bit off, I felt like. He overthrew a couple of guys, particularly Fountain. Another one to uh, getting runs with Sheffield. the ones. I do believe Fortson got a couple with the ones. He got a pass from Henny with the twos. Those were the completions. Again, that connection with Henny seems mm -hmm. to be there. Um, so that's a big positive. But I don't see Blake Bell getting targeted. Uh, by my count, there was one target for him today in two 11 periods and a seven that I was able to watch pretty consistently. And so yeah, I just have no idea what they're doing there. Because yeah, I don't think they do either. <laughs> it's, I mean, that's the way it seems. I mean, if you're going to have Fortson getting all these targets and he's going to be getting passes thrown his way. Why aren't you, I mean, it didn't seem to play out the way I expected it to. 
for me, it seems like you're exploring exactly how consistent can he be? Can he continue to do these kind of things? Is that pass catching ability clearly and consistently above what you get from Bell enough to justify keeping him over Bell or with Bell? I still don't think he can keep four, though. Yeah, I don't think they can keep four either. And the problem I have is that if you're going to have him play and see how consistent he is, he probably should be in at all, all stages of the game. Honestly, I would be okay if Kelsey went in for one series and sat the rest of the game. Yeah, uh, I totally. He doesn't. He does not need. It. He's one of those guys. He doesn't need it. Uh, you know, Patrick doesn't need it. Kelsey doesn't need it. Although I will say, I would like to see Fortson catch a ball from Patrick just so you can see the chemistry there and see if those two are on the same page. But at the same time, I mean, if Patrick's not going to play very much, take Kelsey out too. Put Fortson in and, and let him play the entire game. I mean, yeah, if, if he's playing in the fourth quarter against threes and fours, he should be destroying them if he's going to be on this roster. But at the same time, if he's, you know, can he produce when he's playing with the first and second string? And honestly, the other question becomes, what string are they going to be playing on Friday night? Because against the 49ers, it was basically the second string that the first team was playing. So right. then you move into the second string was playing the third string. And I mean, it's, you know, it just goes downhill from there. So, yeah. It, planning is a, a difficult thing. Like we heard, the the Chargers aren't going to play Derwin James. They aren't going to play Herbert. Eight players. It's crazy. So, like, if you get up against that scenario, it again is a question of, of how you're raising your level of competition yeah. in practice as well. And I'm glad you bring that up because I was just looking at the stat. This is one of the things from Warren Sharp. Sharp football. If you don't follow him on Twitter, you should. Number of players held out of preseason week one by team. The number one team was the LA Rams with 38 players held out. Whew. The Vikings held out 33. Two Kansas very City. different teams in their progress as well. <laughs> right. And, and Kansas City is at 11. Tampa Bay's at 8. Jacksonville is at 7. And Washington's at 6. And honestly, Kansas City was at 11 because they had injuries. And I think that's probably why a lot of these teams have so many players they have injuries to deal with but 38 that's not injuries that's you're choosing not to play guys and i don't understand the thought process behind that i'm not sure either maybe it's because you don't have the fourth season preseason game that maybe you're trying to get that that evaluation of the young guys up front because you know you can't really go away from the stars they need game three before they get two weeks off before week one of the regular season so maybe you're trying to stack reps for the maybe. young guys up front i don't know I don't know that even if they, that is what's being done, I don't know that that's the best way to go about it. But you still have six teams that held 30 more and more players out. That's crazy. The Rams, the Vikings, Seahawks, Giants, Packers, and uh, Falcons. And honestly, most of the teams on this list, are, well, a couple of teams on this list aren't very good. Minnesota's pretty decent, but and Seattle's pretty good. But the Giants aren't expected to be a great team this year. I think they could be better. Uh, but Atlanta, especially without Julio Jones, I don't know if they're going to be that good. But how do you keep that many players out? It just none of that makes sense to me. Let's get back to the to training camp for the Chiefs because that's really what we need to be talking about. And you were there. What else really stuck out to you? What uh, I, I did see that the linebackers were Gay Bolton and Hitchens. I think that's a good, or I you know it's Gay Hitchens and Bolton, but uh, yeah, you know, it was those three guys. So, um. Today, it looked like there was a lot of nickel two-backer sets. There was a couple of, of base where it was the three of them. But it was very definitely going in pairs, um, Willie and Hitch, Nick and Neiman. And I think that's a nice combination where Nick's going to play a little bit more off ball with Neiman out there. So he's making the calls, et cetera, at least from what I saw today. Um, let, let's pump the brakes on the demise of Ben Neiman, though, because he is still going to play significant snaps. And he's not the only one. We'll get into some of those guys also, because when you need parts to pump your brakes, you have to go to rockauto.com because that's where you can get them all the easiest way without a brick and mortar store. You can save 50 or 100 bucks or percents even. And that's really what it comes down to. They've been in business 20 years. They're your friends. They treat you well and they treat you evenly, whether you're a pro or, a, or an amateur like me. So the nice thing about it is all you got to do over there, go get everything you need in your cart. And as you go to check out, if you would write locked on in that box that says, how did you hear about us? That'll let them know that we sent you over there. RockAuto.com for all of your parts, reliable selection, low prices, reliably low prices, and all the parts you're ever going to need for your car or truck. Check out RockAuto.com. Do you know 85% of people who play daily fantasy sports lose? Is it really that surprising? The game is rigged against you. You're playing against thousands of other lineups, not to mention experts 
who have more tools and more time. You just don't stand a chance. Introducing Stat Hero. It's the first ever daily fantasy sports book that puts players in control and winning within reach. Here's how it works. Stat Hero shows you their lineups and dares you to beat them. It's you versus the house in a head-to-head -head fantasy matchup. Your name, your stakes, winner take all. You have the advantage. Stat Hero is showing you their lineups ahead of time. No one else does that. You need to go check Stat Hero out. This is the way to play daily fantasy sports, uh, and this is the way that I'm going to try daily fantasy sports this year. You are in total control. Stat Hero is for DFS the way it was meant to be, one-on-one. -on -one. Play Stat Hero now and change the odds. Go to stathero.com slash locked on, sign up for free, and right now you can get three times back on your first play. They're giving you a 300% match. That's unheard of. Go to stathero.com slash locked on. Stathero.com slash locked on. I dare you to beat me. That's what they're saying. Yep. I think that's fun. There's a lot of there's a lot of players that are saying, I dare you to beat me. It's training yeah. camp. That's kind of what they do. <laughs> it's that time of year, right? Yep. I, I think that they're going in a good direction. Um, obviously, we know the competition at wide receiver. Burton to get more passes today, by the way. I just want to put that out there. Um, but also, like today seemed like at the play call, a good volume of run game. Really picking up on what we saw the other night that made that, Ryan. Not just a, yeah, like it's to the point, like I don't want to I don't want to bank on a mirage, but like <laughs> it seems like in fact I commented to someone this is the most run that I've seen practiced in training camp in the last five seasons on any one given day. And maybe it is just one day, but it definitely seems like they're working on that. And the defense isn't necessarily getting bowled over. Um, there was a, a couple of times where the runner would have been caught right in the hole. So like the defense is coming on too, and I I wonder sometimes if it is more about getting the defense up to speed and defending the run than it is about making sure that they can run the ball. Could be. Could also be that they're looking at this next game being the running game because they threw a lot in this last one. So uh, Andy likes to fl flip it, and I would not be surprised if they went more running style this game, this week, especially That's considering true. if you think about it, if the starters are going to play a little bit deeper, which you would expect, uh, that would take less of a chance of Mahomes getting hit if they're running the ball more. Yeah, very true, very true. So um, let me go over my notes to make sure I hit everything. Um, you guys might have seen on, on social media, Colin Saunders picked up where he left off after that ball game. Um, <laughs> got in a good rotation. He and Warden in with the one sum, moving around. Uh, Taco Charlton was back out there today. He was working with the twos, but did get a couple of one reps, as I saw. Um, Taco doesn't look as fully ready as I had hoped. I'd put him at probably 85 or 90 percent. So I, I think this lingering thing from the injury is a little bit more significant than I had uh, originally thought. But it does seem like he's making progress. I think Mike Dana is out there putting his name out. Um, Ward and Kano were with the threes today uh, as a pair. I, I didn't see them really very, very much, uh, especially in the 11s, which was what I was mostly paying attention to. So it seems like both the linebacker level and the, the rush end level, they're starting to get kind of paired up as duos that you can move around, but like something where you try to get a little bit more continuity and a little bit more, uh, you know, bookend mentality where you're helping the guy across from you. Well, that's kind of what you want. I, it's really going to be interesting to watch and see how they're able to change things up with the defensive line. It, it is concerning to me if Charleston's not going to be able to play this season for the Chiefs because that really takes a hit to their depth and they don't really have the depth to be losing anybody right now. Yeah, uh, that's for sure. Um, saw Bly snapping the ball a little bit more with the twos. Um, Daryl Williams still with the threes at center. And I think the biggest story Which today is interesting because Allegretti played center the other night. So, yeah. Uh, and, and I do believe I saw Allegretti take some center snaps as well. So, like, I don't think that there's by any means anything set in stone, but I thought that that variation was interesting. But to me, the biggest thing was that Mike Remmers gets back out there, and I saw him exclusively at left tackle today. Yep. I did not count one rep at right. Maybe I missed it. I don't know if the beat reporters saw something I might not nope. have. That's what they were saying is that he okay. was at left tackle the entire day. So uh, that tells me that maybe that they've decided that Niang is their right tackle, and so Remmers has got to get reps at both. Or, or at least at this point that they've seen enough that they feel he can be their right tackle. Maybe it's not set in stone. My guess would be that it's not but that they're going to proceed as though they want to see him more at right. And then hopefully this week you get to see, uh, obviously, 
more total snaps, but more of a, a continuity getting into it. And so, like, I, I'm hopeful that that is Niang's job at this point to lose. Well, and the question is, is Rembrandt even going to play this week? You would think that he would, but at the same time, I mean, I was I was thinking that he would have at least gotten a couple of snaps this last week, and he didn't get any. So, yeah, I don't know. I mean, That's surprising. It's a little for Gile, if we're going to put it in terms of a Christmas story, but I, yeah. I, I don't know. Um, don't back, push him, back, I guess. Yeah, back injuries have that effect on linemen, and I get it. I just you you hope that he gets some reps before the season starts because there's nothing like game reps. Yeah, preseason um, or not. Yep. The other big development for me is I counted a couple three corner sets uh, where Sneed was inside, but saw Hughes inside a lot today too. And I find that interesting that they're moving those two around. Hughes does seem to be gaining momentum right now. According to everything that I saw today, just from one practice, I would guess that Hughes is, is third on the depth chart at this point. That's a great development for Kansas City. If you can go trade what you did for Hughes and get your third corner. Uh, that's a fantastic trade for Kansas City. Now, it also motivated Rashad Fenton. I saw him playing hard, uh, especially in man reps. He looked like he was pretty motivated today. Um, so I'm going to take that as a big positive. And so, I, again, another position where I don't think it's set in stone, but that competition level coming up is a positive sign for everybody involved. Yeah, and then you have Baker as well. So, you know, is Fenton behind Baker? Is Baker behind Fenton? I mean, right now we don't know. We'll have to see how that ends up. But Baker played very well the other night. Uh, and I think it's, you know, obviously Fenton getting an interception would have helped him a little bit more, but that didn't happen. Yeah. Um, on my notes, also saw uh, Fenton and Baker and Baker and Hughes as pairs as well on the outside when they did go into the base. So, like, again, a little bit more experimentation. Um, certainly the versatility of this group is good. Saw Bo Pete Keys up there. Um Ahead of Boodle, didn't see Boodle a whole lot today with anything other than the deep backups. So while I was happy with his play the other night, and especially when we saw him take some safety reps, I don't know that it's translated yet. Uh, still looks like he's probably on the outside looking in uh, practice squad candidate at this point. Which is kind of what we thought. I, I don't think he had much of a chance of making this roster just with the guys that are ahead of him. I mean, he would have had to – the only guy that I think he could have unseated would be Fenton maybe. And Fenton, I thought, was pretty – was going to be a guy that was going to be here regardless. So, to me, I, I think that Boodle was always going to be on the outside looking in, unless they keep six. That would change things. But, I mean, you're pretty set with Baker and Hughes, and you're not going to release either of those guys, and you have Ward as a starter and Sneed. So, I mean, that's going to make it very hard. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And that said, we'll see what happens tomorrow. Hopefully see more Devin Key. Didn't see him with the ones very much today, if at all. I think I'm like a rep or two. Very much Sorensen and Matthew. So uh, I'll have more for you guys tomorrow. I'll be back out there again. So I hope that you'll stick with us. And if you're on YouTube, make sure you like and sub and hit the bell notification here, as well as everybody. If you'd keep those iTunes coming uh, with the reviews, that always helps us. And it helps us keep the podcast good and strong. Spotify as well. We're going to be all over for you. So, Chris, anything in particular you want me to watch tomorrow? Yeah, it's really going to be fascinating for me to see what happens with wide receivers. I, I just think that that's going to be a group that you think we know the top five. Sorry, I think it dropped out. I think we know the top five probably, but the question is, is who's going to be six? And honestly, I guess maybe you could make a question who's number five right now. I think we know, but at the same time, who knows? I think his name rhymes with mountain. Yeah. But hey, another ball game Friday night. Folks, I'll have more for you tomorrow. We will see. Thank you for spending your day with us. Today we'll be back with you tomorrow, and we'll talk to you then.